I can't go anywhere without my Arcani Edge Control Coil Care. Arcani Coil. It is only Arcani Coil Care. I am Jerrica Hoskins. This is the Arcani Story, destined for greatness. Okay, so I'm staying with her. My caseworker ends up like giving her, I guess like foster custody over me. I had a guardian at Lytton. They knew I had run away from the previous foster home and they like, okay, if she says that you can stay here, we'll just make her your guardian. They did that. But they also knew that they told me if I graduated high school, I'm emancipated. But I didn't walk it. So um I, I i got done with my credits i stayed with her for like a month or two after like i think i i got done with my credits in october i had to stay with her in november i would have had to stay with her november december but uh, -uh. so uh again the brothers that like such kids are living with this person and i would stay in my room my boyfriend would come get me like i wouldn't have to interact with them because I wasn't never there. I just slept there. And then I started planning on moving out. Like, I can't stay here. Like, it's, I can't stay here. I had been planning on it. I was packing my stuff and like hiding it in the garage because I'm like, okay, when it's time to move, they was, they was like lazy people. They didn't move around much. I could act like I'm in a garage cleaning and be loading my stuff up into a car. They didn't have a lot of stuff. So, so her brother that molested me gets drunk one night and literally something, I forget what happened. He said something to me and I'm like, I don't, don't talk to me to say that. Like, and he attacked me physically, like scratched my face up, was trying to kill me. And I'm running, I'm 110 pounds. I'm running through the house and I run into her room. I'm like, he trying to kill me. And she's just laying on her bed like, oh. He comes in, he's 500 pounds. He comes in pummeling after me and like has me by the neck. I'm, I'm 16 years old. Has me by the neck and I'm gasping for air like, help. Like, but she big, she can't move. Like it was uh, blood all down my face. And I'm like, bruh. Like, I'm just about to run away. I can't stay here. Like, so I called my boyfriend at the time. I'm like, hey, no, we're going to have to speed this moving process up. I got, uh, we, I got to go. Um, we ended up, I moved out like that, that November. Horrible decision. Like, a lot of, like, young girls, like, young teens, they, they be in situations like that. They get in toxic relationships. It ain't no better. It's the, it, it. It's a mess. Uh, so I try to be that support to these girls now. I know how it is. Like, so move out. Everything's good at first. Like I'm in STNA school. Like I'm 16 years old on my own. I don't know how to cook. Uh, <laughs> you should've seen the first time I tried to fry some. I fried some chicken, y'all, with just seasoning, no flour. <laughs> I'm like, why is it so salty? I wondered how people got it crispy. So I poured seasoning salt in like a Pyrex pan and I rolled the chicken around in it. And then when I fried it, I'm like, this isn't it. <laughs> Zero life skills on my own. So that stuff was cool. He was 19, I was 16, I was about to be 17. And uh, it was just not a good fit. It was volatile, like it wasn't, it wasn't good. I won't, I had no business doing it. Um, but it was better than what I the situation I was in. So I still, like I said, she never did nothing to me. Our relationship was very strange because she never caused me harm. It was the people around her. So I never associated her with it until like I started like soul searching, like mm, that wasn't okay. Like, and that didn't happen until I was like 25. <laughs> so 
seven, like 16, that year I turned 17. Uh, technically, I'm still on the run. I didn't graduate from high school, but I didn't really go through like the emancipation process. So we living together. He got a job. I'm doing home health care. We working together or whatever. Um, I'm like, oh, I was working at KFC in Miamisburg. And I was a little firecracker. I'll admit that. But I always have been me. I say whatever I want. Like, with that, it has not always been with tact. But uh, I remember I had got off work. KFC was on till like 11. I got off work. I get picked up from work. And it's like, he comes, picks me up. He like, you about to break my hair? I said, no, no, no I'm not. I'm tired. <laughs> I said, how your cousin do it? It's cousin was a boy, but he braided hair. So how you do it? Man, I said you go braid my hair. I said I not. <laughs> no, I'm not. And we I don't know how it escalated. It just escalated. And I remember we on 75 North. And he just starts swerving between all the lanes of traffic and like 90 miles an hour. So I shut up. I said, you won. I bring it here. Just slow down. Slow down the car. Like, like nah. You do what I say. Duh, duh, duh. I'm like, no, no. Okay, I'm going to be quiet. I just, man. These people, you could, I remember looking in the rearview mirror and traffic behind us came to a standstill. And the people in front of us was trying to like, it was like a, like part in the Red Sea. And I'm like, I'm about to die. I just remember saying it like, he about to kill me. And he cut that wheel and like slammed into the wall. Like to this day, I still cannot drive on the highway next to the barriers. Like I'll drive in the center of the highway because my shoulders be like slammed into the wall. We're in a Buick, like Regal, like a 2001 Buick Regal. Hits the wall, I feel the back of the car go up. I'm like, we about to flip into the river. But it bounced back down, I'm like, okay. So my foot, foot is broke I know that for sure it's white powder all over me this white couple comes and yanks me out the car they're like we saw the whole thing and I'm like okay like what happened <laughs> like they like he was swerving we knew what we knew it was about to happen and they were only a few feet behind where he wrecked and I'm like damn like they're like, God is with you. I remember the lady, the lady saying that she like, God is with you. Like, I'm like, okay. Little bitty nuggets along my pad. Like, but I'm young, I don't see the full picture at this point. So we um they I go to the hospital, get casted up or whatever, and I end up since she was my guardian, I end up getting dropped off to her, but I ended up back with my mama. Like my mama came and got me. Because it was a they trying to kill the daughter, you know. So we um uh, I'm at my mom's house, I got a pink cast on. I know it ain't no good gonna come for me being at my mom's house, but I went. So I got a cast on my foot and she like uh you staying here. I said, okay. You think that I'm going home. Cause that's I pay bills there too, you know. Uh so I don't remember what happened, but me and my mama got into it. She wanted me to go to bed at 8 o'clock. Uh, I've been living on my own. I'm, a, I'm an adult now. I can't go to bed at 8 o'clock. I'm not sleepy. I'm not sleepy. My foot broke. I don't want to sleep on no bunk bed. Uh, she gets to cussing me out. She calling people. She pulled a gun on me. And I said, I'm out of here. In a pink, bright neon pink cast, one shoe, I'm walking through this neighborhood in Huber Heights. I don't got no cell phone, nothing. Somebody end up letting me use their phone. I get picked up and I go back to where I have been residing, you know? Um, yeah, it, I didn't have, that was my, that's how I escaped everything. So over time, I'm like, okay, I know I gotta get away from him, but yeah, that didn't, that didn't pretty much, that, that plan didn't happen very fast. Um, yeah. How was it when you went back though? It was so toxic because we acted like nothing ever happened. <laughs> like, I think that we both went through traumatic experiences as kids. It, it was like a trauma bond. It wasn't healthy. It was like, 
it was so yeah it was just another it was just, yeah like okay the worst has happened than this like let's continue to live together and had it was everything happened for a reason though um so we used to tussle i was a tussler but we used to tussle i it was a it could have turned into a abusive relationship against me had I not defended myself in the way that I did. Like, I didn't get like pounced on, we would fight. Like, you're not about to hit me, I'm about to hit you back. Like, it, it, it was toxic as hell. Um, so, we ended up moving into another apartment and things, I think both of us lost our job or some, somebody lost their job. And the thing about my mom is like, she shows up for me when very bad things happen to me. But disappears the rest of the time. Like, and I don't even know how she finds me. But she always finds me if something bad happens. So uh, before I got pregnant with my oldest son, she like, I, we were staying together and rent a center, y'all, is very petty, okay? Rent a center was so petty. We had a bedroom set in the TV, and I'm like, if you lost your job, we need to send this back. We just sleep on the air mattress because we can't afford this. We got to pay rent. Like, ain't nobody coming over our house. Uh, it was one of the fat back big screens. You know those school big screen TVs. I said, we don't need this. We don't need to be here. Like, oh, he was pissed about that. Uh, and he would think that he could put his hands on me to get his point across, and I can fight. You can't do that. So, uh... I remember us fighting. I broke his nose. We fought uh, because Renna Center, we did, we got behind and they put the, sorry we missed you from like the front of our apartment building of all three flights of steps all around our door. And I don't like being a parent. That was embarrassing. So I told them, y'all can come get this stuff. I ain't trying to steal. They came got the stuff or whatever. And um, he ain't like that. So he had like, tried to beat me up. He had me pinned on the ground. And I calmly said, whenever you let me up, I'm gonna kick your ass. And I laid there for like an hour. <laughs> like, I think he knew what I was gonna do. And he was trying to hold me as long as he could. And when I got up, mind you, at this time, I'm maybe 110 pounds with a wet towel on top of my head. And I punched as hard. That punch came from my toes, okay? <laughs> Blood everywhere. He called. I know how my mom got there. He called my mom. So he calls my mom. My mom comes and I'm like, I'm not going with you. I don't like either one of y'all. I don't. I don't know what I'm about to do with my life. Like, and we still stay together. I ended up in Columbus. We like maybe if we move from Dayton, things will change. And I ended up in Columbus. I was pregnant and we thought running away from Dayton was gonna fix everything and boy did it not.